Hello and welcome to the WeatherQuest farm forecast. This week we're going to start off by taking a quick look back at the rainfall so far uh, throughout the month of June. So that's up until yesterday the 28th. And June was really a month of two halves. The first half of the month for many places was pretty dry, quite sunny. We had some very warm temperatures as well. And then around the 16th of June, we saw a bit of a shift to something more unsettled as we saw areas of showers, rain and thunderstorms spread up from the south and um, particularly into southern Britain. So this here is the rainfall anomaly uh, as estimated by the radar through most of June. And you can see for the vast majority of the places, it's been a pretty dry month. You can see Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northern England, Wales, even parts of the Midlands and into East Anglia have generally seen rainfall below average, particularly so in these central areas and across the high ground of Wales, where many places have seen around 10 or 20 percent of their normal uh, rainfall for the month of June. So incredibly dry generally for most of the UK. And it was looking that way for the south as well during the first half of the month. But then, like I said, around the 16th, 17th, we saw things turn unsettled. And you can see there's these blue colours across southern England and around London and into the home counties. So parts of the East Midlands and East Anglia, it's a bit more mixed. There's some places that are a little bit closer to average. Most places slightly below average, but well above average for many places across uh, southern England. Some places seeing almost two times their normal monthly rainfall thanks to that wet end to the month of June and really since then it's been continued to stay relatively changeable and unsettled as well. So looking ahead for the rest of this week, this is the jet stream. We've had this area of, of low pressure out to the south of us over the last couple of days that's been bringing some rain and showers and cloudy conditions to the south. But elsewhere we've had high pressure building in and that's realistically going to be the story over the next few days. We've got high pressure to the north, one area to the south, uh, and we're in this kind of slack flow in between where there could be a few showers. You saw that little area of low pressure as well pushing in from the east, which could bring a bit of rain to eastern areas for the end of the week. And then by the weekend, we see this more active area of jet stream push in. We've got this broad upper trough uh, to the west of us. So things turning a bit more unsettled by the end of Friday and into the weekend and possibly into the following week as well. So looking at that in a little bit more detail, this is tomorrow. We've got high pressure out to the west across the Atlantic. We've got this area of low pressure across uh, central and western Europe and this northerly flow coming down the North Sea into eastern parts of England. So it's going to be fairly cloudy in the east. We're going to see bits and pieces of rain and drizzle throughout the day across East Anglia, parts of southeast England into Yorkshire, Lincolnshire as well. But further west it's going to be fairly sunny, a lot of dry weather around. We'll see a few showers develop particularly in parts of South Wales and South West England, locally heavy and perhaps thundery, so worth keeping an eye on those. Similar story through Thursday and into Friday for the West in the sense that we're gonna see sunny spells, the chance of a few showers developing. Locally, they could be heavy. They couldn't rule out seeing the odd rumble of thunder for some of those as well. So that's across the Western half of the UK. Further East, it's a bit trickier. You can see this animation generally showed things staying dry. There are lots of other models that with these areas of rain trying to push them a bit further west into some eastern coastal parts. So there is the potential for cloudier conditions, conditions to continue in the east. We could see continued spells of rain in places as well. So just taking a look at another model as to how that's handling things through Thursday and into Friday. You can see in the west, like I mentioned, it's generally dry. We've got a lot of sunshine around but there are these areas of rain just drifting across the North Sea, particularly affecting eastern coastal areas. And as I run this through Thursday, you can see further bits and pieces of rain spreading in, potentially quite heavy and persistent along parts of the east coast during Thursday and into Friday morning. So although many forecasts may show the eastern England, if you're looking at apps, may show eastern England generally dry, but it is worth keeping an eye on the forecast as we could see these bits and pieces of rain spreading in. There's just a lot of uncertainty as to where exactly they're going to track, whether they'll be the east coast of Scotland or Northumberland or whether it's down more into East Anglia and the southeast. But most of eastern England, particularly on the coast, is at risk through Thursday and Friday of seeing a few showers or spells of rain as well. Now into the weekend we have this broad area of low pressure out to the west which begins to sweep in. Saturday morning is generally dry, a few showers around, but as this pushes through We'll see some more organised spells of rain, some more widespread showers, potentially turning heavy in places as well through Saturday afternoon. And similarly into Sunday as well, as this low pressure continues to slowly shift eastwards and we see a more widespread scattering of showers developing through Sunday. Potentially it could be some quite heavy downpours on Sunday as well, so worth keeping an eye out on those. 
So if you'd like a more detailed 10 day forecast for your location, the best way of doing that is to subscribe to our WeatherQuest farming portal. Now you can get a two week free trial of that by dropping us an email at info at weatherquest.co.uk and as well as a, a detailed 10 day forecast for your location, you'll be able to see the longer range monthly forecast across the UK and Europe as well as probability and ensemble forecast as well, giving the, the likelihood and uh, probabilities of, of various uh, parameters going forward for the next couple of weeks. So well worth taking a look at that, as you say, get a two week free trial of that as well. So looking a bit further ahead across uh, the rest of Europe and throughout into July as well, this is next week, the week beginning the 5th of July. You can see that low pressure that's pushing in at the weekend is gonna stay relatively dominant through that following week. We've got this blue here, which is uh, below average pressure. So generally seeing low pressure here, also seeing this area of low pressure down in the southeast as east of Europe as well, but then high pressure to the northwest and generally high pressure out to the southwest as well. So quite a split depending on whereabouts you are in Europe and that has an impact on the rainfall as well. So many northwestern areas showing up as these green colours above average rainfall, similar down in the southeast as well around the Balkans, Ukraine, Bulgaria above average rainfall and you can see there's this area in between where we could see some fronts push through, see showers developing where it's the, the kind of slacker pressure in between the high pressure and drier conditions out to the southwest and the northeast. So across this central belt is where things might be a bit wetter and more unsettled, but the best of the driest weather down in the southwest. In terms of temperatures, generally things are gonna stay above average, even the UK getting back to something slightly warmer than average um, as we go through next week, but particularly across Scandinavia and northeastern Europe. Now, looking a bit more closely at the pressure pattern for the UK uh, going forward through the next 10 days or so, this is just an example for the Midlands. This is an ensemble forecast, so the same models run many different times, and you can see the outcomes begin to deviate as you go through that forecast period. So generally, over the next couple of days, as I've mentioned, we're in between these two areas of high pressure. So there's a few showers around, but generally pressure is, is relatively high compared to how it's going to pan out next week. So we see this, this higher pressure, still quite a lot of spread though, that's that uncertainty I mentioned regarding those little areas of low pressure coming in uh, from the east. So in fact, maybe for the next couple of days, there's a bit more spread really than you you'd generally expect for a two to three day forecast. So that just highlights the uncertainty over the coming few days. Into next week there, there is a good signal of pressure beginning to drop as that low pressure moves in, as we just mentioned. And then after that, for the following week and into that next weekend, we tend to see pressure begin to rise, but you can see there's a fairly massive amount of spread uh, from something like 1,030 down to um, just below 1,000 uh, millibar. So a huge amount of spread through the following couple of weeks, but signs that pressure might begin to slowly rise as we move into the middle part of July. And that's generally replicated here on this map. So this is uh, both the mean pressure and the anomaly, the black lines showing the mean pressure, uh, the colours showing the anomaly. So you can see generally pressure ridging in from the southwest across the Mediterranean, across parts of the UK and Central Europe. We have got low pressure up here, which might push, push a few fronts through um, across Northern Europe. So it could be above average in some of these northern areas. Further south, I think generally rainfall will be below average as that high pressure builds in and temperature wise things are going to stay generally above average. There is this slightly cooler cooler area here in northern France um, and northwestern Europe but generally elsewhere temperatures are looking to stay relatively above average. Now into the following week, the week beginning the 19th of July, it's a similar kind of pattern. We still looked to have high pressure around here building in but there are more diurnal driven showers as you can see here. So many of these inland areas showing up as green, see inland parts of uh, the Midlands, uh, France, Germany, down into Italy and the Balkans as well. And that tends to suggest that we're gonna see some quite showery, showery weather. So quite hit and miss. Um, the further inland you are, obviously, you're more likely of seeing some of those daytime driven showers, but also lots of dry weather around as well. Where those showers don't form, we could see uh, rainfall generally below average. So a bit of a mixed week into that following week, uh, but it does look like there could be a few showers around in places. So to summarise, this week we're going to see generally sunshine and the chance of some showers in western parts of the UK and Ireland. The odd one could be heavy and perhaps thundery. Further east, it could be cloudier with some rain at times, but a lot of uncertainty over how exactly those areas of rain are going to track. So well worth staying on top of the forecast 
um, if you're in the east of Britain. It does turn more unsettled into the weekend and through the following week, but there are hints that things could turn more settled again as we move towards mid-July. So thanks for watching this week's video. As ever, you can keep up to date with the day-to-day -day forecast for East Anglia and the UK on our social media channels. And if you've got any questions regarding the farming forecast, feel free to write a comment below. Thanks for watching.